imagine you are standing outside under direct sunlight in a hot and sunny day what will happen after some times you will get dehydrated and if dehydration is happen your body will be in harm and will be in a problem so in order to protect from the dehydration what you will do you will take some precautionary action so what you will do you will take plenty of water you will find out a shade where you can stay so that the dehydration is not taking place our concrete the civil engineers backbones also behave like the same in the early stage gain time the concrete has the tendency that water can evaporate from even the concrete itself and if this water is evaporate then there will be less chance to make a homogeneous and hardened concrete so you will not get the durability and the strength so in order to protect concrete we need to curing the concrete so that we can get the desired strength and the workability in today's video i will discuss about what is curing what is the best practice of curing what is the benefit of curings and what is the minimum period required of the curing and how to keep record and how to maintain curing at the site so in depth analysis i will do about the curing of the concrete so please stay tuned until the end so that you will get the full information and let's jump into the subject and open my mind map and if you are new in my channel kindly subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that whenever i upload a new video you will get immediate notification the first thing we need to know what is curing as per clause 13.5 of is 456 it is mentioned curing is the process of preventing the loss of moisture from the concrete while is maintaining a satisfactory temperature regime so these things or as i already discussed that the concrete has the aggregate that is the fine aggregate coarse aggregate water and cement so whenever we add water into the concrete the water and cement start the chemical reaction so this chemical reaction explains in the longer time and if the water present in the concrete evaporate in this time then there will be less amount of water inside the concrete to gain the strength or make the chemical reaction with the cement so if the chemical reaction is not happened fully what will happen we will not get the concrete as per the desired strength and the durability so what we need to do we need to protect and how we will protect is the curing is the process to protect the loss of moisture from the concrete and also maintain a satisfactory temperature why temperature also has an effect on the concrete if the temperature is high or the below then the crack friction to cycle can happen and it will affect the strength and the durability so two things we need to uh, maintain during the con concrete of curing that is moisture loss or the temperature uh, range to maintain and during the process so these are the curing now let's see what is the benefits of the curing is yes, why it is important why we need to do the concrete so all we know the first things is the strength development if there is a less amount of water the chemical reaction in between cement and water will not happen and it will not happen the desired strength will not happen this proper curing helps concrete develop its design strength making it capable of withstanding the structural loads suppose we have done make a concrete m35 that is m35 is required to take the load of the structure now if the concrete curing is not happen or proper then there is a chances that the moisture is lost so in order to get the strain there is a loss of moisture or loss of water inside the concrete and then the strength will not develop so first things the curing is important to strain development negative in durability again the curing reduces surface cracking increase resistance to friction to cycles and minimizing the chemical attack enhancing the long term durability of the concrete so these things you should know that curing helps to maintain the durability and if you want to know more about the durability of the concrete there is a link for the durability camp concrete and also in the description box please uh, click in the links and know about in depth analysis of the durability the next part is reduction of surface cracks now when the uh, water inside the concrete evaporate how it will evaporate it will evaporate through the surface and when it will be go from the surface there is a chances of the cracks so curing reduces the likelihood of surface crack which can compromise the appearance and the structural integrity of the concrete all we know that there is a crack 
then in the, the longer time, the chemical of the harmful ion that is chloride ion, sulfate ion and the water will penetrate inside the concrete and this will affect the durability of the concrete. So reduction of surface crack also an important part for the curing. Then improve surface finish. Curing leads to a smoother and denser concrete surface, enhancing aesthetics and making it easier to finish. So it helps make an aesthetic views, reduces shrinkage. All we know the shrink shrinkage is a very important part and we all face in our life that in our concrete that the shrinkage crack is there. So if there is adequate curing, then it can be mitigated the effects of drying shrinkage which can cross cracks in the concrete. So curing also reduces the chances of the shrinkage cracks in the concrete. Then enhance hydration. And what is hydration? Hydration is the chemical process in between cement and the water. So we need, we whatever we making the design, we uh, particularly water and cement in exact amount what is the required to make the chemical reaction. So if there is a less amount of water inside the concrete, the hydration process will not happen. Also, the curing helps to enhance the hydration process of the concrete and it ultimately gives the strength and the durability and it makes the consistent properties which means it promises uniformity in concrete properties throughout the structure reducing the risk of weak spots and if weak spots the chloride ion sulfate ion and the water will go inside and the longer term the durability or the lifespan of the concrete will be reduces then reduces permeability the same thing the if the concrete is permeable then there is a chances of the ion and the water can be penetrated inside the concrete and we it will ultimately reduce corrode the steel it will affect the concrete itself so that the we cannot achieve the durability or the longer span then the crack prevention i already discussed and the increase abrasion resistance what's that properly cured concrete exhibits improved resistance to abrasion and wear which is crucial for concrete surface subject to traffic and the play pavement where we are making the concrete that is the traffic so whenever the traffic will go there will be chances there's abrasion on the surface so that the concrete will be gets deteriorated if the curing is not proper that means that this abrasion will be increased and the lifespan will be the less so these are the curing yeah why the curing is important let's see what is the best practice of the curing all we know this early start so we need to start exact the time when the curing is required. So being curing as soon as the concrete has set sufficiently to prevent damage from curing equipment or any other things. So whenever the exact time, the early time to start curing, you need to start the curing immediately. So whenever we are doing the concrete, keep in mind that your curing compound or curing method or curing material, whatever you are using at the site, you need to be prepared at the site and you need to keep at site so that whenever concrete is done, you can immediately start the curing. Then the moisture retention. We all know that if there is a moisture retention barrier is in the surface, so there will be no evaporation from the concrete itself. So there will be the amount will be intact inside the concrete and the proper hydration will be happen. So the moisture retention also another uh, practice of the curing. Then temperature control. This temperature control also needs to be very crucial because if there is a temperature dev difference in bit, uh, inside the concrete itself, then there is a chance of thermal crack. While we know that the concrete core, um, this core and the surface, there is a temperature difference. So we need to maintain the temperature inside the concrete in such a way that there will be no thermal crack so what we will do we need to temperature control and temperature monitor so this is this this is a huge subject how to monitor the con temperature and how to control the temperature temperature con concrete inside or outside that is a different very subject but for the curing and for the concrete gain the temperature control is very crucial then keep wind and sun at bay that means you need to keep a shade so as a human we need also shade from direct sunlight or from the wind the king concrete also need a shade so that direct sunlight will not come and the less chance of the evaporation will happen using curing compound nowadays we are using curing compound when applicable use curing compounds that from a moisture retaining film on the concrete surface these compounds are essentially used for a large area so it can be easily 
it, it is also easy. So one time use and one time use. So it is making a film and there will be no moisture loss from the concrete itself. Our target is to no moisture loss from the concrete itself when the hydration process is takes place. So this uh, the, another method, how curing, use the curing compound. When, that is wet curing. See from smaller concrete elements like column and beams, uh, wet curing methods such as uh, ponding or continuous sprinkling are effective. Keep the surface wet all times. This is the small amount, thinner amount. So you need to sprinkle water all times so that there will be no chance from the uh, evaporation of the calm, uh, water from the concrete itself. Another is curing blanket, all we know, and the avoid traffic. This is very much essential. Uh, uh, during the early strain gain, we should not allow any traffic uh, from over the concrete if it is happened then there will be chance that the concrete will not gain the strength or the durability will be hampered so these are the things that the best practice of uh, curing that is start early moisture retention uh, temperature control keep wind and sun at bay use curing compounds wet curing curing blankets and avoid traffics these are the so we have already discussed what is curing, come or what is curing, and what is uh, why curing is important, and what is the best practice of curing. Now let's check what is the minimum time for curing as per clause thirteen point five of IS four fifty six. That is seven days for ordinary. If you are using ordinary Portland cement, that is seven days and ten days for other types of cement and 14 days for blended cement or mineral admixture if you are using it. No, let me see, uh, check with the IS-456 also, what it is mentioned. See, here it is mentioned in uh, curing 13.5 and 13.51, it is mentioned that uh, with what is going by ponding or by covering with a layer of sacking canvas, Hessian or similar materials and keep constantly wet for at least seven days from the date of placing concrete in case of ordinary Portland cement. That means from the date of placing of concrete, concrete at least seven days if we are using ordinary Portland cement in the concrete and at least 10 days where mineral admixture or blended uh, cement are used. The period of curing shall not be less than 10 days for concrete exposed to dry and hot weather condition. In case of concrete where mineral admixture or blended cement are used, it is recommended that our mineral may be extended up to 20, 14 days. So these three things, 7 days, for 10 days and 14 days. So these are the periods of curing compound, the 7 days for ordinary Portland cement if you are using, 14 days for the other types of cement and for, for sorry, 10 days for other types of cement and 14 days for blended cement or mineral admixture if you are using. Now this, we all know that these 7 days or 10 days or 14 days is required the curing. Now, how to control? Because no, the worker will do the curing. Now, how to monitor and how to control that curing is in place. That is also an essential. We all know the gathering, the ideas, we all know everything. But if you cannot control the curing process at the site, there will be chances that we will lose the concrete property. So we need to monitor the concrete. How? That is maintain records of curing activities, including start and end times, method use and environmental conditions. So as per your requirement, suppose you need to do the concrete four times in a day morning 8 o'clock 12 o'clock 4 o'clock or whatever the times so you need to mention uh, you need to check the, whether these times they are making or not and whenever they are doing the concrete you need to uh, sign the form the quality control form the uh, concrete curing form is there for every companies so that quality control form should be signed and to be kept and record so at what who will sign this one all concerned that means contractor consultant or any other parties answer that should be signed so that is, which is means that concrete curing is in place so these things about the concrete curing i uh, i hope i cover everything and if you find it useful kindly subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that whenever i upload a new video you will get immediate notification and if you want to know anything about quality control or construction pr procedure, please let me know so that I will come with more contents. And I'm waiting for your valuable feedback so that everyone can benefit from your comments or, or your feedback. And thank you very much for once, once again for watching me.